Yo, what's going on, guys? Much love to those returning and shout out to those tuning in for the first time. I'm your host, DeAndre Evans, and today I have a very, very special guest coming on to the show. I mean, as you can tell, he's dancing for those who's tuning in. He's Millie rocking. He's killing it. Uh, let me just say this. If you love music and you have a passion for it, this is definitely an episode you want to tune into. Go ahead and cut the volume up, right? Because that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be turning up on this episode, talking about a lot. And with that being said, the best part about this conversation is that not only is he a DJ, but he hosts many different shows as well. You've probably seen him on your favorite TV show. I mean, he's been a part of BT, Revo. I mean, it's, there's too many to list, but he has had the pleasure of interviewing a lot of great people like Nas. I mean, Diddy, come on, Wiz Khalifa, Floyd Mayweather. I mean, this guy is a legend out here, but I have none other than my guy himself, DJ Damage on today's podcast. What, what it do? What it do? <laughs> What's going on, man? Where you at right now? I can tell you're chilling. Man, I'm in the crib. I'm in the crib right now. <laughs> yeah. It's been a long few days, but yeah, you know, you know how it works. I got you, man. I got you. It's all, it's all a part of the game. It's all part of the hustle. But how you feeling, man? You feeling good? I'm feeling great. Spirits great. Everything's amazing, man. Can't yeah. complain. Good, good. Glad to hear that. Glad to hear that. So normally what I like to do is just open up the floor a little bit. It is Friday, right? You got like a Friday thing going on. So we can do like a flashback Friday type of thing. And if you don't mind, I like to open up the floor to my guests. Just to tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, your backstory, how you got started in the industry, just to give my people who haven't heard of you a chance to know a little bit more about you. Yeah, so I started DJing probably when I was 12 years old. Uh, my brother was a rapper. And I tried to rap. I really did. I <laughs> yeah, really I, tried to rap. I already know where this is going. <laughs> wasn't yeah. really good at rapping. So, you know, my brother used to always call me his DJ. And this is back when I was even like nine years old. This yeah. is before I had DJ equipment. So I was always looked at as the DJ. And mm -hmm. I remember when I turned around 11 or 12, yeah. uh, I went to this boarding school called Gerard College. And when I first started there, they opened up a community center called The Hum. Mm. For some reason, our, our uh, mascot was The Hummers and The Cavaliers. It was whack. But, okay. So the <laughs> community center was called The Hum. So I remember when the doors first opened, mm. I ran up in there, and they had a stage, they had a dance floor, they had an arcade, and they had a DJ booth. Mm. And I was like, yo, I got to figure this out. Mm. And that's where I met my boy. His name is uh, DJ YS. Uh, now Sean McMillan, like that's the dude that kind of taught me how to DJ from the rip. But I remember mm -hmm. running in there, running up on him like, yo, like yeah. <laughs> I, I'm a DJ, like you gotta show me how to use this stuff. And he was like breaking right. it all down for me, like, you know, each turntable costs this and all this. And I was just, like, I can't afford that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so from there, um, as that year went on, I would do like landscaping work and picking up sticks and mowing lawns and all type of stuff. And I saved up for my first DJ in a box setup. Mm. So I got that around, I was like 12, 13, and that's mm. where everything kind of started. And I remember uh, I, I bought it for myself on Christmas, and I remember mm. opening everything up, and I put it all together, and I had two records. Uh. And I, I was playing with the records for like two minutes, and I was like, why did I buy this? Like, <laughs> why did I just yeah. grab Dreamcast? Like, right. this is not <laughs> even fun. Coming. Yeah. yeah, it's not fun, bro. It's hard work. And I'm like, this is like, but, you know, I I remember setting that stuff up and I, I gave it some time. I went upstairs to play some video games. I was like, when I come back off of winter break, I learn yeah. how to use darn turntables. Yeah. So YS was teaching me, man. And, you know, I DJed all throughout high school. Mm. I didn't I didn't really have any other goals but to be on the radio. Like, it's all I ever wanted to do. Okay. So I went to college. I didn't know what I was going to go to school for because I'm like, I just want to be on the radio. I really don't know. Yeah. And uh, my music teacher at the time was like, yo, you should go to school for communications because that's what that is, like working communications. Yeah. What's and, uh, high school? I mean, not high school. What college did you go to? Temple, Temple okay. University. Okay. So I'm going to Temple and like literally I'm only going because I want to DJ. Like I really know I've experience to do anything else in school. And yeah. that's what I did in school. I remember my first year. Um, you know, I was trying to get in all the organizations and everything. Right. Nobody was letting your boy join. Everybody was, uh -huh. I was a freshman too. Everybody's pushing me to the side. Yeah, like, hey, we'll stay over there. <laughs> so I created my own movement mm -hmm. and I got t-shirts made. I had promo girls because we had all the freshmen. All the freshmen was kind of like trying to make our own wave. And that's how I kind of took over my school. I took over my school like freshman, sophomore year. 
And all the people I was asking to join their stuff was like, damn, like, this dude then came up and did his own thing. Yeah. But long story short, there's so many stories within this story. Um, like I said, that. <laughs> I only wanted to do radio, and we started a temple radio show with my homegirl named Brown B, and she worked in promotions at the radio station. Mm -hmm. So she really wanted to be on air. I wanted to be on air as a DJ, but she wanted to be a personality because she was using that as her um, as her air check. Mm -hmm. And when she was sending her air check in, they was hearing me. Mm -hmm. They was like, yo, it's the DJ. And yeah. long story short, man, I was able to um, get myself a situation called uh, Hottest DJ in the Hood, which was like where they were showcasing DJs from the city. And from yeah. there, eventually, without making this story even longer, I was able to secure a radio spot my sophomore year of college. And that's wow. kind of how everything started. That's crazy. That's big. I mean, to, <laughs> to have the intention to know like what you wanted. Because, I mean, honestly, it started out with your bro was like, yo, I'm rapping, you DJ. And you was like, all right. <laughs> it's going to be a group. We're <laughs> yeah. about to be the new outcast, but I can't yeah. rap. So. <laughs> Man, you just like, all right, I, yeah, I'll take the DJ route. But then you took it seriously. Like, yo, I'm going to go to school for this. I'm going to get the degree. You know, I'm going to work this. And you just want to be on radio. And it turned out, you say within like two years, basically, you made it happen. So that's a, that's a big, big time. Yeah, well, you know, it was a long, it was a long yeah, yeah. time. <laughs> I ain't gonna say in two years I made it happen, but it yeah. definitely happened quicker than I thought it was gonna happen. Because you gotta understand, that was the overall dream. Right. So to get that while I was still in school, I was like, all right, like. Yeah. And then, you know, of course, there was many stuff, you know, after that, but that's kind of right. how it started. I got you. I got you. So. During that time, that transitioning, you you DJ in high school and college, like, you know, what was the, the name was always DJ Damage. Is that uh, how it came out? Like how <laughs> I used to be an engineer too. I used to record all the uh, the homies in the hood, oh, and I was man. and I was DJ Duel at the time because my name's Abdul. Okay. And I was like, man, that's not fly though. And my boy, <laughs> so I had a couple names I was going. With. I was gonna try to be DJ Franchise. Like yeah. I had all these names listed, and my man was like. Yo, you should be DJ Damage because you do damage. <laughs> just looking like, nah, that's kind of whack, bro. Like, <laughs> just feeling it. But everybody around him was like, nah, that's it, man. It should be damage. So when I went back to school and I was yeah. like, oh, I'm going by DJ Damage now, everybody was laughing at me like, yo, we're not calling you DJ Damage. That's lame. And then I guess it, eventually it stuck. Like, now everybody called me Damage. So, right. No, that's hot. That's hot. I mean, that's a good name to have on a DJ. You'd be like, yo, who, who DJing tonight? You'd be like, oh, damn it, y'all. It's going to be lit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a different conversation. Well, yeah, that's how I kicked off, man. The name, it wasn't something I came up with. My homie came up with it. Good, man. Good. I love it. I love it. So, to dive more into, you know, the realm of DJing, because obviously, not only do you DJ, but you do a lot of different things, but I know a lot of people want to know a little bit more about it. Like, personally for you, just to open up this, this comfort zone, like, what, what really you know, excite you the most about your creative process when you DJing? You know, is it just the, the atmosphere? Is it the sound, the songs, the setup? What is it to you that? Well, for me, I, I'm, I got bad anxiety and I'm real shy. So okay. me, it was like, how can, I, how can I be at the party and not be at the party at the same time? Like, and be out the way. And I was like, mm. always back in those days, the DJ was always like in a corner somewhere. And he was in the party, he was getting it lit, but he didn't have to be like, you know, getting bumped and stuff. Like, I just, I, I'm yeah. still not good with that. Like, I don't know how to be in a party. I always I, just know how to be behind the DJ booth. So that was really like how I first started. Like, man, I got this social anxiety, but mm -hmm. I still want to be at the party. I love the music. I love watching people dance. I don't necessarily want to dance. And yeah. I don't necessarily want people touching me. Yeah. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, but I want to be here. So yeah. I was like, okay, I want to be that guy over there. And mm -hmm. I think that's how it started. And I was always into the technical aspect of DJing, like scratching yeah. and beat juggling. That's kind of how I started. And then mm -hmm. as I got older, I got more into like the more party rocking. And, you know, yeah. so it, it was all like a transition. I got you. I got you. I love that, though. So you was more so, well, you kind of still are, right? You were an introvert. Basically. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But which turned to like an omnivert. Like you still, you out in the social scene, but you still like, eh, I'm being this corner. Maybe just gonna get it over here. Yeah, bro, I'm the king of sitting by myself in the corner. Everybody like, you good? I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm perfect, man. This is my vibe. <laughs> yeah, just give me a drink or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm just over there just watching people. I'm a people watcher. Yeah, yeah, I feel it. I feel it. I like that, man. I like that a lot because I know a lot of people personally tuning in on and I try to cater to a, a big group. We got a large audience. A lot of people are like, yo, Dre, get damaged on. Get a DJ on. Get somebody in the music industry. Because I had a guy, um, James Worthy. 
I'm not sure you're familiar with James. Yeah, James Worthy was on not too long ago, and it was a great episode, great segment. And you know, he was telling his story about the music industry and how he see it shaping and how it's reforming and everything's transpiring. And I just want to get your take on, you know, what do you see is really going on in the music industry since you ended as a DJ? Do you see it, you know, well, short, you see it as like going left, you think people is saturated? Like, what's your, your take on it? Nah, man, streaming brought it back. This shit was about to die, though. <laughs> I'm telling you, they was, they was in hot water, but streaming brought it back because there was no more money to be made in the industry. Like, you know, back when we came up, you sell a record once, yeah. you know, that's it. That's it. It's gone. Which was fine because at that time, everybody was buying physical records. And then mm. once the internet came out, everybody was bootlegging their favorite artists and their favorite CDs. Yeah. And now, you know, it was hard to make that turnaround. But once they yeah. figured out that, that algorithm and how they're going to make revenue off the streaming, it brought so much budget back to the labels. Because now it's not like how it used to be where you buy one physical CD. Mm. You can have an album and it keeps playing, keep playing, keep making money, keep making money, keep making money. Right. So now the record labels are back in positions to sign artists and give advances. And, yeah. you know, actually now if you start looking, they're actually starting to, to develop artists again. And that hasn't happened mm -hmm. in a long time. I if like you look that. at little Nas X, that's a developed yeah. artist. That's not an artist that blew up on SoundCloud and they just took him. No, they masterpieced mm -hmm. everything a part of this dude's brand. So, yeah, I mean, you know, the record industry is definitely back. And if you want to be independent, that's a great avenue for you, too. So it's really looking good if you want to do music right now. Got you, got you. Because I, like I said, I know you in the, in the midst of everything. So you yeah. see it all from both sides. And I, I believe I caught like a little glimpse into a new show that you into. I think it's like A&R. Yeah, yeah. Like Armchair A&R. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Because I see like you working with artists up and coming, something along those lines, right? Yeah, so it's my show for BET Digital. And they wanted to get people that usually critique music to actually see if they can go in there and create a single. And the artist I'm working with won a BET competition. Her name's Day Jones. She's from Chicago. And she joined the competition during the BET experience off, off a whim. She was there to sell some hair products, and she paid somebody to stand in line for her. Mm. And when her time came up, she ran back in line, performed, and won the competition. So yeah. I'm working with her to help her develop her first official single with a record label. And they're just documenting that journey. That's heavy. That's heavy. I like that. That's a good concept. I think we need more of that, too, just on a, a public mainstream, especially people that's trying to get into the industry. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, people trying to break down barriers. They're trying to take a laugh. And a lot of people don't know what they're doing. So having someone in your expertise behind them, that's heavy. That's real heavy. It's fun, man. Look, I'm learning as I go, too. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw a trailer. He was like, uh, what's a &R? <laughs> Hey, He was like, what's that? I <laughs> mean... Know? <laughs> Who really knew what A and R stood for? I know what A and Rs do all day, but I never, yeah, yeah. I never really try to pay attention to. And it, I mean, I think I, I think I knew, but you know, for the sake of production, I had to act like I didn't know. <laughs> I'm sure it's artists and repertoire, but yeah, he was like, eh, close enough. I feel it. That. I feel it's it. It's a production, and like, yeah. <laughs> and I even laughed at them. You know, they try to make me seem in, in a novice of certain things, and I'm like, guys, I've been only doing this my whole life, so it's not going to be a lot of questions you're going right. to ask. You're going to have right. to edit it like I don't know. Like, why would I come on a show about being an a and r and not research what an a and r does? Like, yeah. I'm never going to do that. So right, right. That's like rookie mistakes. That's like one-on-one stuff. Exactly. <laughs> they were like, oh, so you just know everything. I'm like, yeah, I know I'm doing this show. Of course I'm going to try to know yeah. everything. Like, right, right, straight up. <laughs> I'm going to go sit down on camera looking crazy. So, but, yeah. you know, the, the edits and everything is fun. They made, make, make, definitely make it more enjoyable. Right, right, right. And that's obviously what we see in the transpired out. So that's cool. But tell me a little bit more, because I, I like the a &R, the channel that you had an outlet. I also admire the fact that you was, you know, with Revo, basically, right? Yeah. And BT, you did that as well. Like, let's let's hop back, do like a time travel real quick, skip back, because I know that was a little earlier in the session. Like, how did that transpire? Like, how did that come about? What happened there? I got stories, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. a long time ago, yeah. I, um, was being a guest host on 106 in Park. Mm. And I was supposed to get the job after Terrence and Roxy left. I got a, I wish I could find this footage. Somebody at BET, if y'all watching this, give it to me. Where out of nowhere, it was me and my homegirl, Pajian. We were hosting after New Year's. And mm. out of nowhere, they was like, yo, these are the new hosts of 106 in Park. 
Yeah. And y'all gonna see them more this year and blah blah blah. And we had no idea this, this announcement was coming. So it was like <laughs> so when they made that announcement, I'm talking, you know, I'm thinking I'm about to be the new host of 106 in Park. This is dope. Yeah. Mama, this is a dream. <laughs> I, I never got called in for the job. Uh. And then a few months later, they start doing this competition, like, oh, 106 in Park is looking for new hosts. And everybody hitting me up, like, yeah, I thought you was the host. What's going on? I'm like, bruh, I have no idea. Right, right, right. It's above me now. <laughs> it's way above. I just was like, whatever. <laughs> on radio, somebody on the opposite station was looked at as my competition. Their manager reached out to me like, yo, you know, this revolt thing is happening, and I want to uh, submit your stuff for it. Mm -hmm. Now, this is right after Diddy put the new uh, joint on. I don't know if y'all remember Diddy put that post on Instagram. It was like, I'm looking for hosts. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, that was a wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that first post where everybody was like, yo, what's this? <laughs> so I remember seeing that. And then when yeah. old boy hit me up saying, yo, I'm, I want to submit your stuff for it. It was mm -hmm. like, yo, that would be sick. Now I got to move another step backwards. When he said submit my stuff, I had to right. have stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. I needed yeah. to have some kind of material. I've never done TV before. Uh -huh. What happened was there's a sneaker store and I don't know if it's still in rotation, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I don't know if it's still in <laughs> But it was called The Villa. You ever heard of The Villa? Oh, yeah. No. Nah, it's, uh, it's, you said it's a store, right? Yeah. It's a sneaker yeah, store. Yeah. It's actually one out here near me. I still, I still one around. Yeah, yeah. So it was a time where The Villa, I was official DJ for The Villa. I used to work there every weekend DJing. And yeah. they started putting TVs in their store. So I pitched to the dude that ran Villa in the, in the mm. offices. Can I create a TV show for the TVs y'all have in these stores? Because they're all connected in each city. And I was like, you know, it'd be a good way for people to walk in the store, see what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They said, okay. They gave me a budget. I shot a bunch of stuff. I interviewed people like The Game, Michael Vick, uh, yeah. Meek Mill at the time. I was interviewing everybody in the city because I was on radio at the time. So I yeah. had some pool to get people, but I've never done TV before. Gotcha. Long story short, my, per my homie, because I'm still in college at the time, and yeah. I went to school with, was supposed to edit everything and deliver it to the villa. Yeah. He dropped the ball and disappeared. Mm. Damn. So that opportunity didn't happen. Right. But what he did do to make it up is, from all that footage we had, he mm. created my reel. Okay. So that is the reel I gave old boy that was going to submit to Revolt. Mm. Okay. I'm trying to fast forward because this is a very long story. Bro. No, it's detailed. I'm pretty sure everybody into it. I'm into it. I want to know what's happening. <laughs> so, boom, I gave them that. And this was during the time uh, I was trying to become a heavy hitter DJ. Okay. Not the DJ enough. And before I was a heavy hitter DJ, the heavy hitters from around the country will go out with Golden Boy Productions, which is Floyd, yeah. and interview Floyd himself and his boxers to promote the matches. This is before, you know, yeah. Instagram and Twitter was really big. They were getting radio personalities to come out and personally interview Floyd Mayweather. Mm -hmm. So I came out there once, interviewed Floyd, and then they flew me out again to Grand Rapids to interview, uh, interview Adrian Broner. Oh, wow. So yeah. coming back from interviewing, and I, you got to say, I never even left the city before. This is the first yeah. time I've ever been to Vegas, Grand right. Rapids. I don't know about none of this. I'm still young. I'm like 20. Like, I'm yeah. just happy to be around. you like, so, I'm gone. Yeah. Look, coming back from <laughs> interviewing uh um, Adrian Broner, I get yeah. a call on the phone. Well, I'm on the plane. I'm on the plane now. Yeah. <laughs> I get a call and it's like, is this um, DJ Damage? And I'm like, yes, it is. They're like, hey, this is Val. Uh, Mr. Mr. Combs wants to speak to you. And I was like, huh? Mr. Combs wants to speak to you. And I'm on the plane, bro. Like, the plane is yeah. about to taxi off to take off. And I'm like, is this one of the moments you get off the plane? Like, <laughs> like is this yeah. a Diddy moment where you get off the plane and like, miss yeah. the flight? Right. I didn't get off the plane because I, I I had a newborn at the time, so I was like, I gotta go home. I was like, look, yo, I'm on a plane. I don't know what to tell you right now. And she's like, Puff wants to speak to you. Not right now. Sorry, dude. <laughs> I had to go. So <laughs> I tried to call back when I landed. No one answered, and like a week went by, yeah. and I was just like, man, I guess I blew that. And they called me back to set up a um a audition to go to New York and kind of mm -hmm. do like a field audition like hosting on the streets yeah I went up there they mic'd me up i started doing it i felt like i bombed it like i mm -hmm. felt like i 
like they had me a script like to uh, remember and everything, and I didn't remember it well, and I was studying mm -hmm. it all night. I went up there. I felt like I bombed it. I really yeah. wanted to go home crying. I went back on the mega bus. I felt like I wanted to cry. <laughs> it's like, no, nah, it. Like, what was the point? Like, I, I effing blew it. Like, you had a chance and you blew it. Nah. Another two weeks goes by. Mm -hmm. Yo, I'm sorry. This story is so long. I'm really sorry. It's no, it's, I, it, no, man, it, it deals, and I'm shortening this story up. <laughs> so understand, I come home. I'm like literally about to cry. I'm on a on a, on a bus. Like my face is on the window. I got tears. Yeah. So I try not to come down. Two weeks like, goes by, yeah. and I get another call, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Yo, Puff wants to interview you." And I'm like, yeah. "What?" Yeah. <laughs> now understand this. At the time, I'm mm -hmm. on radio, but I'm on mm -hmm. radio all day. I do a morning show. I mm -hmm. do a new mix. I do a new at two. I right. DJ in the afternoons with QDZ, and I got a night show. So I was all over my radio station. Yeah, that's true. Sean Puffy Combs wants to interview you tomorrow in the middle of the damn day. I need yeah. to be on the radio. Yeah. So I'm like, what do yeah, what I do? You, exactly. What do you do now? Like, See, the first time, I blew it. <laughs> I'm not doing this again. So yeah, I got yeah. up at 5 in the morning, and I went to the radio station. I recorded all my mixes on CD. Mm -hmm. And then I left them in the main studio, and I called every person out. Well, I left the text. Like, mm -hmm. yuck, I'm not going to be there. Yeah. So put this mix on, and yeah. I'll, I drove up to New York. Yeah. Long story short, I get in there. Uh, I meet some other people that eventually started to work at Revolt. We're mm -hmm. all in this little conference room. Mm -hmm. and they take us upstairs, upstairs. Yeah. They put mics on me again. So now I'm like, what is this, a TV show? I'm about to interview with Puff, and I got a microphone on me? Why? Right. And they're like, put the camera in my face like, yo, um, are you, you know, are you nervous? Yeah. Are you excited? And I'm just like, yeah, man, this is scary. You're right. So I some dude out here in the hallway. We're like in these cubicles, like how the office looks like it's different rooms, but they have like big cubicle walls, like detachable walls. Okay. okay. So I'm in a different room, but I can hear Puff through the wall because technically you could detach the wall. Mm -hmm. you hear Puff in here on the phone. He's like arguing or something on the phone. He's talking to somebody crazy. So it's like he already yeah. not in a good mood. <laughs> And right. then I hear somebody out in the hallway screaming and yelling, like, happy, but, like, you know, turned up. Yeah. So they ask that person in the hallway, yo, you want to meet the people that's going to interview with Puff? And he's like, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, I want to yeah. see who about to interview with Puff. Let me see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Dude walks in, and yeah. when he walks in, he's like, damn it, what up? <laughs> and I'm looking at him like, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, dog, it's me. And I'm like, what are you talking about? This is the guy that organized the trips for us to go interview Floyd Mayweather. Wow. His name is James Cruz. I didn't know James Cruz is Puff's manager. I didn't know that. Wow. James Cruz is also a heavy hitter. Yeah. I didn't know none of this. That's crazy. I seen James Cruz, but he's always on the phone. He was like super important. And you understand, I wasn't even a heavy hitter yet. Yeah. We're doing this, these trips. So I just was staying quiet and just staying out the way. Like I wasn't right. bothering anybody. Because technically, yeah. I didn't have to be there, but they were showing me mm -hmm. love. So he's like, yo, I'm about to go in there and tell Puff to get off the phone right now. I'm like, no, 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 yeah. bother. So he going, you hear him stomping, boom, 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 boom. Puff, get the F off the phone. We got some people for you to interview, whatever. Yeah. I was the first interview. Mm. I, I believe everything went well. Long story short, I got the job. Mm. And I'm trying to just cut this story down, because this yeah. is, I don't want to no, be but. That story itself of how I got on Revolt is is a book. It's like, got you. It's crazy. That the whole story so far is already crazy. Like I can literally picture myself there with you from the time from the plane <laughs> all the way to the time you met Diddy. Right? I can't pick this stuff up, bro. Like, I exactly, can't. you can't. <laughs> easy. Yeah, that's that's why. That's why. So let's let's expand on that a little more. I know you trying to cut it short, but let's just. Oh, I was only cutting it short because I didn't want to be long. You know. No, no, no you fine. You fine, but. When it, when it came to that introduction with you and Diddy, because everybody loved Diddy, right? They like, yo, it's Diddy. Like, come on. Like, what was that conversation between you two? Like, what happened a little bit exactly? And like, what did you learn from him that will stay with you forever, you know, in the game? Oh, uh, so what would be my first introduction to Diddy? See, which I met Diddy before because I was working on radio and I ran up on Diddy. We mm. had a concert call, uh, Super Jam, 
Mm-hmm. And I remember he was backstage in the parking lot with all the security around him. And I told one of my co-hosts, who was Michael Sean at the time, I was like, I'm going to go talk to Diddy. I'm going to get Diddy to do a drop for my vlog. And I still yeah. have all the footage. And somehow I finessed my way over there. And Diddy's over there drinking a Mc, uh, a Mc Cafe. Mm. He's not paying my camera no mind. He's not paying me no mind. And I'm like, yeah, you know, one day, Diddy, you know, I'm going to be a Ciroc, but I'm going to be working with you. He was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the first time I met Diddy. He was kind of flagging me off. When mm-hmm. I went to do the interview, um, I sat down, and I felt like I was his first interview, and he was kind of figuring out how yeah. he wanted to compose the rest of the interviews. I would believe the first introduction is when I finally moved to L.A., and I got to have a little one-on-one time with him in the hallways. Yeah. And one thing I guess I would say I learned from Puff is, how would I put this? Puff just moves... Puff knows how to use his influence to, to motivate people to do better, right? Mm-hmm. Puff was the intern, right? Mm-hmm. Puff started off as an intern. Puff has been fired. Puff yeah. had to create it from his own, right? Mm-hmm. So when I see Puff now in, in the time I met him, he uses his influence to bring that hunger he had to other people. Because mm-hmm. Puff is a cool dude. So when you see a lot of times he's, like, turning up or whatever, like, yeah. he's doing it because... That's try- he's trying to he's trying to spark that hunger in this generation we have now, because mm. it's the same hunger it was when he was out there washing right. Andre Harrell's car. Right. And I mean, people don't move the same way they used to move. So mm. I feel like a lot of things I learned about Puff is like how to keep that hunger going. And Puff don't sleep, and I say yeah. I sleep. I definitely get my sleeping, but it's not <laughs> the fact that copying him not sleeping. It's copying the hustle. Like the mm. hustle doesn't stop. Like Puff doesn't stop working. Rather, it's him working physically. Or him having an idea where somebody else is working, the work doesn't stop. And that's definitely right. one thing to learn from Puff, man. And learning how to move a bunch of people. Everybody don't have that gift where their mm-hmm. rhetoric can move a bunch of people to do some things and make change and create networks. And Puff yeah. starts speaking on Instagram. Everybody's like, yeah, man, like, I want right. to work with Puff. Like, he, he motivates you. So yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's something I definitely picked up from him. Gotcha. And he always dances, so he'll just make you, you know, in a good mood. He just puts you in a good mood, you know what I'm saying? He just being himself. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you ain't working with Puff, so you don't know. He ain't always dancing, and he be coming in <laughs> like, yo, what we doing? Yeah. You know, Puff is serious, too, so it's definitely yeah. a balance. I just respect, I mean, you respect that, though, a little bit, right? <laughs> I get it, I get it. I mean, now, I, always had, I always had good interactions with Puff, so I never been, you know, I never had to, because I'm always yeah. hustling, though, you gotta understand. Right. Hustle, respect, hustle. Like, every time he see me, I ain't sitting down on my feet. Like, you know, it's certain things, like, you you do when you're around a hustler. Like, if somebody that's a hustler and they come in and you work for them, they don't want to see you sitting down when they come in. You should be standing up. The crazy part is, like, when stuff goes wrong on TV, no one thinks about the cameraman or things behind the scene. They just see us. So learn yeah. how to push through those uh, difficult times, man. Like, you know, it's times the prompters will go out, cameras will go down, and you got to just know how to keep it moving. Right. But those difficult times made me more agile and made me more flexible. And now when I go into certain situations, I just have no fear because I've done the worst of it. I've interviewed Puff on a live TV network. <laughs> couldn't mess up. Right. <laughs> it's like, you know, I've interviewed, you know, the Fast and Furious cast in the middle of Hollywood. Yeah. Prompters went down and we don't even know what we're reading. We don't know how we're tagging out. We don't know what camera to look at. And you just winging it and you just learn how to have fun mm. and just get that smile on. You know, yeah. create your own cue. So it was definitely a lot of difficult things, technically, and mm-hmm. with the the aspect of you know learning how to become a host. But right. if it's not difficult in the beginning, you kind of don't want it, bro, because it don't you don't learn how to become sharper from it. Yeah, that's real. I respect that, and I and I like how you move. Honestly, like I, I commend you for everything that you do, because I pay attention to obviously those who I bring onto the show from afar. See how you move in. I like how you curate. You know how you always positive. Um, and also just bringing value, you know, in any situation, any case, scenario, whatever it may be, you always seek out to be a value to somebody else. You know, you seek that asset versus a liability. And that's what I admire. And I was like, yeah, I got to connect with Dan. Oh, I appreciate he, he, it. Yeah, no, he's like, you get it for sure. And it's, it's another thing, too, that I want to, you know, touch up on and give you kudos for. It's just I, I see that you're very open, you know, on social media. And I see that you share your relationship with your son. And I'm not sure... If you're comfortable along that line, but um, you have a son right name. What's his name? Legend. Legend. Yeah. And I see how you always do, you know, 
uh, Sundays, right, right, something like that, or so, yeah, that, that quality time. I think that's very admirable because, especially amongst our generation and our demographic, you don't see that too often. So, you know, shedding that light and, and putting out your your wisdom, you know, your knowledge and sharing your love overall is something that I, I really like and enjoy too. And I feel like it should definitely be, you know, on the path to let people know that, that that's a good thing. I appreciate that, man. My son is a young star. That's all he wants to do now is record videos. But <laughs> right now we're taking a break so he can just focus in on his schoolwork. Yeah. But those videos are definitely coming back soon, especially now. He's, he's so much older and crazier. Right. Like, you know... It, and I'm also trying to, uh, well, I'm not trying, I'm partnering with uh, a company called Travel Noir, Blavity, to mm -hmm. uh, set up some trips abroad so me and my son can start taking those vlogs and taking yeah. them to different countries and stuff. That's big, man. That's big. I'm definitely tapping into it. I'll let everybody know, too. We're going to put all the information down below. But that's heavy. I like that. Appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. definitely. So now, since we all over the place, and I kind of like it this way a little bit, <laughs> I like the little chaotic feel a little bit, but, you know, I'm thinking along the lines for up and coming artists, whether they be in the music industry, DJ, being a host, whatever it may be for them, based off your expertise, like what advice would you give to them, you know, seeking to step into some place like yourself? Like, you know, what to look out for, what's not to do, what to expect type of thing. It's crazy, man, because I'm actually creating a course for people that want to become media personalities, radio personalities, podcast mm -hmm. personalities. Yeah. And I, the biggest advice, man, is you got to be intentional. And I, people used to tell me this when I was growing up, and I never knew what the heck it meant. And I'm like, what do you mean be intentional and be focused? Like, I, I never got it. But as I get older now, going into my 30s and looking back at my life, even if I didn't realize it, I was always intentional. I always knew what I wanted to do. Mm. And I had no backup plan. Like, mm. since I was 11, I was a DJ. Yeah. That was it. There was no, oh, maybe I'll do this on the side. I, didn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't even see anything else. And mm. I think a lot of us... We need to start looking at a lot of our passions the same way because that's how you get it done. I remember I went to a Steve Harvey conference and he was like, I don't like plan B's because it takes away from plan A. You should only have a plan A. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I underestimate how intentional I was growing up. Mm -hmm. But when I start helping other people who want to get into things I do and realize how it's a big jump for them to just go full force into their passion, you know, I took for granted how intentional I was. So I think the best advice I can give is be intentional and be focused and carry your life out like how you carried your life through school. Yeah. Like when you had homework in school, you had to get it done. The day before, you know, you. so today's set, uh, Friday, you should be planning your Saturday. You should be writing tasks down and you should be making sure you get them done. You yeah. can't. Leave it aimlessly out there because you won't get anything done. Time doesn't work like that. You have to be very intentional with everything you do. Right. And I think it's just that simple. That's more important, I think, than talent because I'm not the most talented dude at all. I work with people that's 20 times more talented than me, but they're not organized. They're not intentional. And they don't have good work ethic. They don't have good people skills. And sometimes they're just not good people. It's just mm -hmm. overall. So I think the best advice is, like, know what you want to do and be intentional. And, and, and don't try to do 15 things at once. Just because you see damage, be a DJ, be a radio personality, you know, do a YouTube show, do this, do that. I started being a DJ first. Yeah. That's what people don't see. I was a great DJ first. Right. You have to be a, a what I like to say, you have to be an authority in one field first. Mm -hmm. When you look at TV, you see Michael Strahan doing television because he was an excellent football player. Kiki Palmer's on TV because she's an excellent child actress. It all starts from somewhere. Or you see somebody on TV that was an excellent stylish, a stylist, stylist. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? They yeah. were something great first, and then it expands. So now your brain can expand to 15 other different things because you are great at one thing. Yeah. Like when you look at Shaq, he was an amazing, legendary basketball player. Now you see him on the general commercials. Dunk and dunk, all types of stuff, but he was one thing first. Right. So I think everybody needs to focus and really hone that one passion that they have and then build off of that. Mm, I like that. I like that. And I usually touch up on that too in a lot of episodes that I share. And I'm glad you mentioned that again. So people that's watching and listening, pay attention. You, you a little bit more articulate than me. So <laughs> they probably take it from you better. I'm <laughs> stuttering, saying stuff wrong. Like, no. <laughs> No, that's real. That's how I, I mean, I'm the same way, man. Like, I usually keep it real where all my audience you know, trust me. So I, I totally understand. But, like, like to your point, you know, I definitely uh, understand and resonate with that, especially for a lot of my uh, guests. 
uh, as well that comes on, just understanding that you have to put yourself in position to succeed. And sometimes you got to make sacrifices. You know, you can't always, you know, taste everything. Even though I say taste as much as you can, try as much as you can. But from your general point of view, it's like find something you get at first, work it until you make enough to where you can branch out. And then that's when the other streams start to come in. And that's basically what it is. And I totally get that. So people, pay attention to what he said. <laughs> pay attention to it. And I think to that certain extent, though, now I'm trying to, because my mind is everywhere. This really, yeah. <laughs> it's really, I go like, what's what's next for you though? You know, like what's coming well, up? For, I for think, more? I think, um, I always had a gift in motivating people, mm -hmm. and I feel like a lot of times where the places and opportunities I got, it's because I know how to talk to people and I know how to make them feel good about themselves. And it's yeah. not because I'm the most talented. It's not because you know I'm the best. It's because you know, it's that, it's that personal skill that you have. And I feel like a lot of people need to definitely develop and hone their personal skills. But what's next for me, man, I really want to help the next generation of people that want to be host and media personalities. I think I have a lot to offer. I think my way into the game was very unique. And I learned a lot of things and a lot of skills that people... It's, to get in this game that, I, that I'm in now, yeah. it takes at least 10 years. And in, it, and it takes 10 years, and this is why. One, because entertainment is not a young person's game. People think that, it's not. It's an older person's game because a network takes time to connect. Mm -hmm. Like me knowing you, and in five years from now, me continuing to know you, yeah. it, makes you it makes us to be able to co-sign each other for opportunities. Right. If I just met you today, and you just meet me today, Based on your resume is what I have to co-sign you on. But if I have a personal connection with you, right. things go farther. So a lot of these opportunities people see I have came from networks I created when I was in college. Mm -hmm. From people that I seen rise up with me, from people that used to be interns and assistants. Now they're, you know, in executive positions. They don't understand, like, you grow with your network. So I really want to get into media coaching and helping people and understanding how this game really works because it doesn't happen overnight. But yeah. it can happen faster if you have a, a, a mentor because a lot of things, it takes you a time to get certain places because you have to learn the rules and you have to get the experience. Right. And it's hard to get that experience if you don't have a mentor. And it's hard to get a mentor because literally this is a competitive game. Like somebody's not going to necessarily mentor you because you can come in and take their job. Mm -hmm. But me, I don't look at things like that. Like what's for yeah. me is what's for me. And, yeah. you know, there's so many talented people out there and it's the internet. There's so many brands. There's so much ways... So many ways to make money, you know, mm -hmm. that's what I'm looking to do now. Like with my brand, like I'm looking to jump, jump more behind the scenes and yeah. help the next, you know, and push, you know, people that are super talented, more talented to me than that, that could be on these big screens and interviewing the biggest artists or the biggest actors and actresses. Yeah. Like I want to help cultivate that. So that's what I'm looking to do next. I love it, man. I love it. And I know, like I said, I know I got you on. I know you got things to do. I know you're kicking and doing your thing, but... I do appreciate you for coming on. I do appreciate you for sharing your, your value, your insight, and breaking everything down. I think it's, it's important that, you know, we in a time where you have to be transparent, you have to reach out and reach back and pull people up with you. And like you say, be a mentor to so many people so where they can actually resonate and build their own, you know, dream and build out their own path. So I, I love all of that. And I'm going to make sure I put down all the information down below. Uh, where can they find you at, though? Uh, what's the best social media handles? Man, everything is at the real DJ damage. That's T H E real DJ damage. Twitter, Instagram, uh, yeah. Facebook is I am damage. Uh, the website for my media coaching is coming soon, so look out for that. It's the legendary media group. And yeah, man, look if you're trying to get into podcasting, radio, television hosting, anything that has to do with media, you know, holler at me. I can help be your guy. If only if you're serious, though. If you're not serious and you're not trying to invest. Your time, your energy, and, and your and some hard work, I can't help you. But if you're really serious, if you're one of those one out of a million people or one out of, you know, whatever <laughs> number of people that really are serious, because it's not everybody. Everybody yeah. acts like act, act they're serious, but you're not serious. You know, sure. let me know and definitely connect with me on my Instagram, and we can get connected, uh, get things going. Perfect, perfect. So, again, guys, I'll make sure I put all the information down below in the description. You can tap in as you can tell. Damage the cool dude. Even though his name is Damage, he, he means well. All right. So <laughs> hit him up, you know, DM him. He's very chill and relaxed. 
Um, and again, appreciate you, man, for coming on. It's been an honor. All day, bro. Thank you. Until next time, guys, much love, peace, and blessings.